Thanks very much, Eamon. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, as Eamon said, my name is Dara Coakley. I'm from MTU Cork, um, and uh, I'm from the Department of Technology and Enhanced Learning. Within there, um, I'm aware that kind of I'm in between everybody and the end of, uh, I'm sure, very satisfying, but also a long day. So I'm just going to shut up and get on with things. Um, so in terms of e-portfolios, I suppose talking about the benefits of e-portfolios, obviously one of the biggest things that they offer is, I think, primarily flexibility. So there are systems that can be implemented for different stakeholders across an entire institution in a number of different formats, and they can be easily reviewed, transferred, navigated so on and so forth and this lends itself very well in terms of the purposes they can serve so an e-portfolio could be used for assessment evidence and reflection it can be for formative and summative assessment it can allow for very detailed and additional feedback it can encourage critical thinking reflection skills and it can also allow for a variety of media text images video so on and so forth all in the one space um and lambert and Corin, just as a very kind of broad kind of categorization of how e-portfolio assessment can be used um they've identified three areas which can be academic integration via the curriculum so kind of formal assessment according to learning outcomes can be prompted which is a more informal method and it can be self-managed which is essentially allowing the students full autonomy of how they manage their e-portfolios so when we talk about the role of e-portfolios, um, Ring has a kind of a good, I think, kind of broad categorization of the types of activities that you can do with e-portfolios. So she identifies showcase uh, portfolios, which is a way really of just highlighting achievement, experiences, things like digital badges and micro credentials, learning portfolios, which is really kind of focused on, I think, more the learning and the feedback aspect of it. And then as well, assessment portfolios, which is a way of assessing kind of students according to particular learning outcomes. And I guess when we talk about assessment of e-portfolios, we could look at the e-portfolio as kind of a flexible space for submission so for students as a way of uploading um, a number of different kind of media and methods all within the one space or the e-portfolio itself as an assessment output so the e-portfolio is a kind of container for assessment versus the e-portfolio as the output itself um, and there's a number of additional benefits in the use of e-portfolio schools can use them to demonstrate they're meeting certain academic criteria and also graduates can use their e-portfolios as a way of highlighting soft skills offering kind of detailed information about what they accomplished within their time at a HEI so on and so forth so this is kind of a broad categorization of I guess the student life cycle with a view to the learning process and e portfolios are something which can be brought in to all of these different areas or whatever of these individual areas, depending on the learner and the teacher requirements. So within MTU Cork, we have access to an e portfolio system which is integrated into the Canvas VLE, which we use called Portfolium, and that offers standard e portfolio functionality in terms of allowing students autonomy, allowing them to upload multiple media, um, using uh, the ability to use it as kind of, like I said, an assessment output, a container for assessment, or as kind of a reflective journal for students and what we did was over the past semester we implemented a number of pilots small-scale pilots looking to um, use the e-portfolio in a number of the kind of areas identified there um, so what i'd like to do is very quickly go through the pilots that we did the results of those and maybe offer a number of conclusions around kind of the use of e-portfolio so one of the pilots which we undertook was using e-portfolios as work placement supports, and that was done with third year tourism and hospitality students who were out on placement. So broadly speaking, what the students did was they simply used their e-portfolio as learning journals and as reflective spaces to provide information about their work placement activities and to reflect on what they had learned, their experiences in general, so on and so forth. So in terms of the student feedback generally, and apologies for all these pilots, student feedback was done via an online questionnaire and educator feedback was via semi-structured interview so for the tourism and hospitality students on work placement generally the feedback around the use of the e-portfolio was positive with a view to its flexibility and availability flexibility and availability but more negative feedback related to technical issues having to learn how to use this system while on work placement and what we refer to as additional clicks so as well as using the vle 
they also had to kind of go through the VLE to get into their e-portfolio, which took longer. Educator feedback in general was more positive. It identified a number of teach a number of benefits from a teaching point of view, and also noted the potential for use of certain VLE features and certain e-portfolio features as a way of kind of managing um, the use of the tools for work placement. Um, although it is acknowledged that that comes with a certain cost in terms of student autonomy. So I'm not going to bore you to death by going through all of the various kind of findings, but just from a quantitative point of view, generally feedback from the students on the overall use of it was a bit mixed between unsure and very positive. The easy use, again, was somewhat scattered. Availability and the use of the tool to support work placement were more positive. And generally, there are recommendations for improvement around it really related to additional training and a more simplistic kind of user process. Um, an additional uh, pilot which we undertook with the ePortfolio was getting first year community to development students to basically develop an ePortfolio. So one of the assessment activities for this particular module is based around developing what was traditionally a pen and paper ePortfolio. Uh, and um, over the past semester, that was changed to use a, a e-portfolio for that assessment. So generally, the feedback from those students was that the uh, the concept they appreciated um, and they were uh, positive around the kind of range of tools which were available to develop the portfolio. Um, feedback was less positive around the overall user experience and again the use of the technology and getting to know how to use the technology. The educator feedback was very positive and uh, the educators in question identified the ability to showcase non-traditional elements, so elements which would not necessarily make their way into a pen and paper portfolio. The e-portfolio system allowed them to um, uh, allowed students to present that information in a more effective way. And it was also noted that it also allowed students to balance a certain amount of structure with a certain amount of creativity. And again, in terms of the quantitative uh, data that we got back, that was generally kind of um, reflected in the students answering the questionnaire. Um, the recommendations around what worked well or what did not work well was generally, again, kind of related to technical issues. Um, certain students had difficulty with video elements, um, but otherwise the recommendations for improvement, again, really just related to more training and uh, I suppose a more simple user interface. And then finally, um, a number of uh, students undertaking an MA in arts therapy use the e-portfolios as a learning journal space. Um, so essentially they were in the process of developing a um, using the portfolio as a space for reflection, but also putting together their final kind of um, assessments. Um, generally, they were positive on the use of the e-portfolio to support journaling. Um, the availability of the resource scored less effectively as a lot of these users were using their phone as a way of um, uh, reflect or reflecting or keeping a learning journal. Um, educator feedback was positive, but less so for the previous two pilots. And it was also noted that one of the students had raised concerns around privacy and access to their e-portfolio, as well as additional available tools which were also out there um, so in general um, some very kind of rough observations around this was that generally educators were far more positive around the use of the tool compared to students which i guess does make sense given that it provided um, educators with kind of quite useful outputs for assessment, whereas the students were the ones who had to do a certain amount of heavy lifting in terms of having to learn how to use the software and make it available. Um, the background and context of the students um, should be factored into the application of the ePortfolio. So the area for study, more students studying more technical kind of um, subject areas were maybe a little bit better equipped or kind of had more kind of competence when it came to learning how to use these new systems quite quickly. So the amount of technical experience the students have, their um, understanding of existing HEI systems um, factored into things, as did their certain students' awareness of digital rights. So it was interesting that it was the MA students who were the only ones who raised the concept of privacy and digital footprint, whereas the first year, second year students were less um, inclined to do so. Um, the use of the e-portfolio itself, although we think of these as kind of um, 
as kind of the same tool does not necessarily kind of equate to the same user experience. So many of the students, um, if they were required to put together a basic learning journal, that's quite a straightforward experience from a technical point of view. If they're required to put together a fully kind of uh, bespoke e-portfolio off their own back, according to their own decisions, um, then that's a more complex kind of output. And in general, technical and UX elements remain the key challenge. So students existing familiarity with existing systems either helped and are hindered two minutes now or you're doing well on time thanks um some areas that we had intended to kind of investigate but which we did not get a chance to related to the e-portfolio as a job seeking resource so students who graduate with an e-portfolio available to them uh, research has identified that they maybe have more confidence and it, they're able to provide employers with more information with a view to their experience and kind of accomplishments. Um, and Grush identifies that a lot of the students' college experience is lost or not adequately represented in resumes, whereas um, the use of an e-portfolio and also the use of digital badges within an e-portfolio can greatly help to represent that and or to supplement one's resume. And the whole area of e-portfolio and digital badges is indeed a very interesting one. Um, Gibson has a good way of describing it. He describes it as symbiotic relationship of digital badges and the e-portfolios um, can be, uh, is, is an area of great interest for us. Also, as well as kind of graduates, the use of e-portfolios for prospective students can be very effective for recognition of prior learning and obviously for course Courses where there is a, a portfolio entry requirement, such as kind of uh, down in Cork in the Crawford School of Art and Design, many of the courses would look for some kind of portfolio. So some final thoughts on the student life cycle. I guess if we were to look, if we were to think about the use of students using the e-portfolio before they enter into the HEI, during their time in the HEI, and after they leave the HEI, we can vaguely or kind of roughly kind of categorize these as personal use of the e-portfolio, which is kind of before entering into the space, so for RPL, for uh, submitting a portfolio for application. The academic kind of category then refers to the student's use of the e-portfolio while they're studying in the HEI, and the job-seeking element then comes for graduates who have completed their course of study and for whom the e-portfolio remains available as an additional space to show their expertise, offer links to, for example, final year projects, so on and so forth. So all of this ties into the notion of the e-portfolio portfolio as this kind of evolving resource during the HEI student life cycle. And as I identified for prospective students, it can involve presentation of work or experience in a fairly informal context for application. Uh, for active students, it can be aligned to assessment requirements. And for graduates, it can be aligned to highlighting attributes to prospective employers. So when we look at the student life cycle, then we look from this learning process to maybe more pre, during and post use of an e-portfolio for our students. Um, and just in general recommendations relate to how to optimize this process and make it available to students. And finally, there's the references. Um, ILTA have a really good kind of journal out at the moment relating to the use of e-portfolios as does ePortfolio Ireland. And that is uh, where you go to learn more. And that is me done. So thanks very much.